Jurassic World is a huge hit, which you may love or not love. You can tell us below. Uh, but we, what we have is the invention of uh, sound effects for these dinosaurs, having to assign new uh, what what we think they could have sounded like, mm -hmm. uh, especially for the mutant dinosaur that we created in the fiction of the story, uh, the Indominus Rex. How does that work? Well, there's yeah. a new featurette from the people who made these sounds out, and it's really interesting. We went with something that was screamy and squealy, and at one point Colin used the term annoying. You know, you just want this thing to, uh, you hate it. And we definitely needed to give it mass. So there's walrus in it, there's whale, there's beluga whale, there's lion, there's big, big, big pigs. So a lot of the body of the Indominus to give it its size is still large animals. But then there's lots of screamy animals in it that hit the higher frequencies. The gyrosphere is a major sound cell. So we had to find a way to give that some texture, some life, make it feel real. So I did a lot of glass recordings. One of the things I did was I took a glass carboy, big five gallon jar, and put a microphone inside, but because I wanted to spin it and I can't have a cable off the end that's getting tangled, I put it on a potter's wheel so that it would spin. And we set up this outdoor pit of wood chips and different branches and things, and we had Benny Burt, one of our Foley effects editors, go out and act like a raptor. We took these DPA mics and we attached them to his feet. And then we had myself and Nia Hansen and Scott Coteau all out with recorders chasing Benny around as he ran around like a raptor. So that was interesting. Andy Burt uh, was a velociraptor running around in the hay. It's not as uh, a terrifying when you see this. Yeah, just for fun. I like the head shifts. Yeah. Even though we couldn't probably hear that. Uh, yeah, it's I not actually the commitment to the role. It's not the producer running around like a raptor that you have to worry about. It's the other producers running around like raptors that you didn't even know were there. The other three raptors. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> raptors some other guy in the woods for life. Um, and then we yeah. have yeah, it's, it's 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 interesting to see how they how do they come up with these things like with mm -hmm. the rolling glass or glass like sphere. Uh, it's like, how do we record this? You know, there's going to get a, a cable in the way. If we hold it a certain way, it's it needs to sound like something that is round, but also made mm -hmm. out of this material. Let's get a pottery wheel and a glass and touch it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you could think of a lot of ways that, that could have gone wrong. I mean, it's a super futuristic vehicle, but they didn't want it to sound like, like the Jetsons car or something. They wanted to place <laughs> it firmly in the physical world. Um, and so it seems like they did a good job there. I would like to hear the Jetsons car personally. Uh, it's a really interesting uh, featurette from Soundworks, the Soundworks collection. Uh, I do recommend checking it out. It's interesting mm -hmm. to see how they came up with these effects because because Jurassic Park basically decided how dinosaurs sound. Now we do have some idea of how dinosaurs could have sounded based on physiology. Uh, I found that out from Dr. Luis Chiappi from the Natural History Museum. You can check that out in a video that is being linked to somewhere. I'm in charge yeah. of this, so I hope it gets in later. Yeah, I mean, you can look at the skeletons that we've recovered and get some information about how they might have sounded. And it's possible that based on the skeletons, you could see some some of where the soft tissue would have connected and draw some inferences, but a lot of what generates sound is the soft stuff that doesn't last yeah, the 65 million years. I mean, we do have some ideas of like skin because of certain saved samples, but mm -hmm. this is a very difficult thing to figure out. Yeah. I, I doubt we have any esophaguses. <laughs> um, but so in the original, <laughs> they were really creative in uh, deciding how things sounded. Um, for instance, velociraptors were, uh, some parts of them were tortoises having sex. Mm -hmm. uh, Gal Gallimimus was I thought I recognized a that. female horse in heat was one of those noises. The, the, the little dinosaurs that were running in a herd. Oh, yeah, I remember. Um, he was trying to remember the name. Rex was, was somewhat based on a dog. Having and, sex. And, no, just a dog. <laughs> and a baby elephant who wasn't having a sex because it was a baby. Yeah, I was going to say this sounded pretty pervy for a while. I like the combination of the different animals that they had to employ to produce the Indominus Rex. I, always, I still find it pretty ridiculous that they're like, the fake one that we made up when every single dinosaur in Jurassic Park is made up. They're all they're I all mean, and then if DNA you think hybrids, about but, even in the logic of the story, they're not, they're, they're monsters. They're not necessarily yeah, they're not actually dinosaurs. creations of dinosaurs, exactly. They take the, the toad DNA to fill in the holes. I remember that promotional video. Uh, I was paying attention. Hello, John. In um, dinosaurs. <laughs> exactly. 
Uh, that whole scene never made any sense to me. Is he literally going to be standing there doing the presentation for every tour group? That doesn't that doesn't make any sense. Um, I think though, uh, it's it's great that they put the amount of thought that they did, not just in Jurassic World, but historically throughout the franchise. Uh, the the visual effects have always been on the cutting edge, and if the sound effects didn't didn't stand up to that or didn't match that, it would have been easy to take people out of out of the uh, like we all we all see the little ripples in the cup of water, but it's the actual the physical reality of the sound as well. That's what's so horrifying. Um, so you did a great job on that. The very iconic Tyrannosaurus uh, roar. Uh, everybody can that remember what that sounds in like. Like a hero. And yeah, we remember that. We had that nostalgic part of our brain. I think. And you know that you must go faster. Paid we a know lot it. of paid many moments of homage to the original Jurassic Park, and mm -hmm. that's just one of them. And I think that was a smart move because it occupies, I think, a nostalgic and and a happy part of our brains. At least yeah. those of us who watch the original as children. Mm -hmm. First movie I ever saw twice in theaters. Uh, yeah, and I also think, by the way, that the, the the guys who get to do this as their job, that's one of the coolest jobs in the world. Ever since I saw the Lord of the Rings behind the scenes documentary and they talked about doing different like rock scrapings and stuff like that to make the Balrogs uh, sound effects, I was like, oh, I wish I could do that. Yeah, I just um, want to be related to these movies in some way. In some way, And that yeah. seems like achievable, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe not. No, probably Maybe not. it's really difficult. What do you think, audience? Did you like the sound effects in Jurassic Park? And do you think that's how a dinosaur sounded? Let us know below in the comments and please be sure to subscribe. <laughs>